Welcome to the arena of the supernatural, where supernatural is always natural. It's always a pleasure to come where you are right now in this moment. We are bringing the good news of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. It's time to say to Pila Weta Mantla, it's to Nova Weto, Nempo Melelo Eto. See, I call it in your bosses, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to Sas locus lindi lugu to president to it was what's in Navesi Abuela in level three. No mage, see a great danger in the way lockdown, scobegela pambin. Sisobona corn, got danger signigaza. Patiently, days of glory. Slater laba shuma laba is manga. Nagle son doges ba pete bagitige, ba ningi, basazo kuluma now. Jobu zuili zolo, big shuma lum lambo, ene, ganyeno, nami, ene, signigaza lezos into the corner. Two men, two apostles, one message. Ye bona gileon doge, in them nand. Nam slanja, we've got the prophet himself, doctor. Uh, William Ondi, as was niggas in the basin, not the online. I'm telling you, Connor Light is a Lelaga Cooler agent. You provoke the glory. Hey, we two losing as moon. Ubon, which is over in Zagala. Hey, why two losing Solomon? We're thinking as moon. Wabusi Sega, what's our girl come on to? Rock the Benjamin Solomon and Tabeno. We provoke the glory. How will you provoke the glory? You will know how tonight because our uh, prophet William Undi is going to teach you. He's going to act me. Me is going to exhort you with God's word so that you will know how to provoke the glory so that you will shine because it's your time to shine as the church of Jesus Christ. A while ago, he was preaching at Mount Zion Carnation. I know you're going to be blessed today in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Me and you, see you tomorrow. If you want to support us with your offering, please, the information is on the screen. Bless us, bless this ministry so that we can continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Just imagine Monday to Friday, we are giving you the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are giving you the good news of the Lord. Yes, you listen it, you listen to it over and over again and you become blessed. May God bless you as we enjoy Prophet William Undi all the way from Zimbabwe, residing in South Africa, Johannesburg, Gauteng. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give Jesus the highest praise. Give Jesus praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. He deserve all the praises. In Jesus' name, Someone give the Lord good praise as you take your seats. Hallelujah, God is so good. She tell him, isn't it God is so good? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's so great to be here again. Amen. And it's good to see all these beautiful faces. Amen. Praise the Lord. You people, you're going to change the world of South Africa. You people, you're going to change South Africa for Jesus. Because you are carrying something of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank you, Dr. Msomi and his wife, Dr. Tabisila, for having me here. And my wife, we bless you. We bless God for you. We say thank you for having us and your leadership. May you be blessed. We love you. We love you, you good people. And your family is our family. Our family is your family. We love you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And uh, I just, uh, my wife is with me, and uh, it is God's divine grace that, uh, that we can travel the whole world. God has blessed me with three children and one wife. It's so amazing. Amen. Praise the Lord. So my wife is here, and it's so amazing that we can travel the whole world together and blessing the nations for Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I just give Jesus praise for my wife. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow I will give you an opportunity just to greet you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But we minister together. We love to do this thing together. We were just born for this. Amen. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's just so nice together. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, I don't want to waste your time. I just want to get into the word of God. 
and see what God has for us to, to this, this night. Is it night or evening? All right. It's still evening. All right. Uh, can I tell you something? You are in a new day. God is doing something in a new day. Yesterday we had an awesome service in our church and I shared with them about the night, how powerful to have a night. We always think about the day, but we forget the night. Amen. Praise God. So I was telling them, when does the day start? The day does not start in the morning. The day starts in the night. You're getting this. The day does not start even at 12, at 1, at 12, midnight. It starts in, in, when the sun goes down, according to the Bible. When the sun goes down, it's a new day. Because the day starts when the sun goes down. Amen. Praise the Lord. So many people, they don't know that. It's fine. But, but, um, all right, but I'm not teaching that today. I want to teach on something of what provokes the glory. The things that provokes the glory. Someone say, what provokes the glory? All right, so can I tell you something? The glory is seen in many things. When right now I call a sick person, I pray for the sick person, and that person gets healed, and people say, glory. Why? Because Amen. Praise the Lord. So, so the healing miracles is God's glory. God's glory is revealed in miracles. Are we together? So miracles reveal the glory of God. And can I tell you something? It's not only miracles that reveal his glory. It's even when someone comes here and is blessed with a Lamborghini, it's the glory of God. So prosperity is the glory of God. Someone say glory of God. Someone say glory of God. That's why right now if someone gives you money, you shout, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Why? Because prosperity is the glory. The first mention of the word glory, it was mentioned right there in the book of Genesis because of Joseph's glory, prosperity, abundance, decays the glory of God. Amen. Someone say glory. So the gold, the silver, diamonds, all these riches, they speak of the glory of God. That's why God wanted you to have the glory. Hallelujah. He wants you to have these things. Can I tell you something? Miracles, they declare the glory. Prosperity declares the glory. Worship declares the glory. Hallelujah. Freedom declares the glory. Every Glory is everything that God is and everything that God can do for you. Are you hearing that? Everything that God is and everything that God can do for you is the glory. Someone say glory. glory. Say glory, glory. So I just want to teach you on this one thing in the spiritual realm. This thing, it provokes the glory. Can I tell you something? I, when, I was a, when I was a young, young man, I'm still a young man in the spirit. Even in the flesh, as you can see. <laughs> Is it next year I'll be turning 40? But can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? I'm still a young person. I still have thousands of years ahead of me. All right, all right, all right. Now, look at this. When I was still a young boy, we went to play outside one day. We went to play outside. Like when you're young, you just love playing outside. That's why people that still play outside, let's say you're married and you're still playing outside, you're showing that you're still a young child who's married. All right, all right, let's leave that. So... So we went to play outside, and as we're playing outside, I sit on this container, and I sit there for about 10 minutes, and I stood up from there, I picked this container, but I, when I came there, I found the container I was there, and I just sat on the container. I did not check what was, what was under the container. Then as I stood up, I decided to pick the container. As I picked that container, there was a big snake. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. There was a big snake and it just went like shh. Then I sh we ran. I shouted, Mama, 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 So my mother came outside and she was like, What is it? I said, It's a snake. And then, and then, and then 
We, t- we looked for it, and then it was, it's like, and then I told you the story. I said, I was just sitting right on top of the snake. And I said, the reason why it did not show up was because it did not provoke it. The reason why it did not become, it, beca- it did not show up to you to bite you is because it did not provoke it. A lion cannot roar until there is a prey. Until something provokes the glory, there will never be glory. The, can I tell you something? There are many Christians here that are sitting and are wondering when am I going to prosper? Some people are wondering when am I going to be healed? Some people are wondering when am I going to get married? Marriage is the glory. Some people are wondering when am I going to have peace in my marriage? Can I tell you something? That peace of God is the glory. Someone say glory. Someone say Kazmulo. <laughs> Hallelujah. So can I tell you something? These things you will not have them until you provoke them. When you provoke them, you begin to have them. Someone say glory. The Bible now says this. Go with me in the book of Isaiah 60. The thing that provokes the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Are you still here? Oh, God, help us tonight. Help us, Lord. We really need you. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 60, listen what it says. Arise and shine. For your light has come. The glory of God is risen upon you. Now look at this. He's telling you that for you to provoke the glory, arise. He says, arise and shine. It did not say shine and then you arise. Some people are waiting for something to happen, then they start moving. Start moving, then things are going to start happening. I tell you, there was one thing in the Bible that provokes the glory. is only believe. Do something in faith, it provokes the glory. Someone say, I'm going to do something in faith. And it provokes the glory. Can I tell you something? The glory of God can be provoked. It's like that snake. If I would have pushed that snake, my man, I tell you, I was going to be in trouble. If I would have touched that snake, with the stick, I was going to be in trouble. Why? Because it cannot do anything unless it's provoked. It's like that with the glory of God. Until you arise, you will never see the glory. Faith provokes the glory of God. Someone say faith. Faith provokes the glory. There is something that faith does in the spirit realm. And that faith provokes the glory. People just, they just leave. Oh, I, I don't have faith. I don't care about faith. Jesus says this in the book of Luke 18 verses 8. He says, when I come on earth, will I found faith? Someone say faith. Can I tell you something? A Christian without faith is a sinning Christian. Anytime you find yourself without faith, you are sinning. Even if you are doing nothing, even if you are not looking at that person, even if you are not, even if you are not sleeping around, you are sinning. As long as you don't have faith, you are sinning. The Bible says anything you do outside faith is sin. When he comes, will he find faith? Someone say faith. Faith is doing something. Can I tell you something? I know there's a, there's a definition of faith in the, in the book of Hebrews 11. But can I, can I just summarize that definition? Faith is doing something even if you don't see the result in the natural. It's doing something before you see the result in the natural. Why? Because faith without works is completely dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Now look at this. Look at this, church. The Bible tells me and you, it says, arise, and then you will shine. What are you waiting for? It's time for you to arise, then you begin to shine. It's time for you to take a step of faith, then you begin to shine. Someone say, I'm doing something in faith. Can I tell you something, church? Things in the spiritual realm are waiting for you to arise. The minute you start arising, you begin to see the results. 
Uh, I have seen people that say, oh, man of God, things are not happening. I'm not going to do anything. Can I tell you something? Those things for them to happen are waiting for you to do something in faith. Yesterday, I draw, I draw from this place and I'm praying in the spirit. Then I'm driving, I'm driving. And then I, God told me to drive through Hebrew. So I drove through Hebrew just praying. So I drove through Hebrew just praying. I was releasing the glory of God in Hebrew. <laughs> I was releasing the power, the anointing, the favor of God. I was rescuing brothers there. I was touching the nation. I was touching the city, the town. Amen. Praise God. Can I tell you something? I'm driving. And then God says, call this pastor quick. Call him. All right, all right daddy. Then I took my phone and I called him. And then I, like, I said to him, where are you? You know, sometimes God just tells you to call the person and you don't know why, what to say. You just call. Because he says call. He did not say, say this. He just said call. So I called and the next thing the word started coming. Where are you? Then we started talking with the pastor. And then he says, I'm in such and such street. Then I realized that I'm passing that street. <laughs> ha. Then I, I said, I said, I see you. I see you. I see you. He said, hey, man of God, you're a prophet. I'm like, no, it's not a, this is not like a prophetic thing. This is God with his children. And I said, come in the car. So he came in the car, and then he sat next to you. He sat just on the passenger seat, on my wife's seat. And then this is what we started talking. And then this guy, he's like, he said to me, this pastor says to me, I said, you don't know what is happening right now. If we go inside my flight, you found my bags are packed. I said, what is happening? You said, um, God told me to go and preach in this place. Everything is done. I don't have money to go. And I, I said, this is God. Because I have money. And I want to sponsor you for all your trip. And he shouted, glory. He shouted, glory. And I realized the glory of God just touched him in provision. Provision is the glory. Then I said, listen, give me your bank details. I put them just right there. I'm sitting with him in the, with him in the car. We are punching everything. Then I said, I'm transferring the money. Have you received the money? He says, yes. And then he started crying. He said, do you know what happened? I said, what is it? He said, I had 90 rand. And then I took my 90 rand. I took 40 rand. I sold it as a seed. Provoked the glory. I, he said, I provoked the glory. Can I tell you something? I, it's rare for me to drive that area, but I, I love driving around and prophesying and whatever. But the, yesterday, God, because of someone who provoked the glory. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Because there was someone in Hebrew who provoked the glory of God. God had to cause me to drive that direction. Someone say, I provoked the glory. Someone say, I provoked the glory. How do you say provoke in Ukala? What do you call it? Well, how do you say? Like when you see the dogs and then you say, ah! Hey, Mzalwane. Kukuluz in Kasimolo. You see, sometimes I, I, when we were young, we used to pass it because I grew up in a township. So we used to pass some places, some, some houses that have dogs. And then we just put Kukuluza, those dogs. And the dog would just come. Can I tell you something? The dog would be sitting there, relaxed. And then a young man who passes and says, ah. The glory is sitting there. He's waiting for someone who can... What? Kukuluza. Who can Kukuluza you eat? The glory is just waiting for someone. It doesn't matter where you are. Or you're in Nanda. Or you're in Wamashu. Or you're in Nutgate or whatever. The glory is just waiting for someone. Who can just provoke it. 
Imagine this man is standing there in Hebrew. And God tells me, I want you to drive through Hebrew, through this street. I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm just going to do it. It's so nice. Then I drove through that place because there was someone who provoked the glory. Can I tell you something? Arise, then you see yourself shining. Provoke the glory of God. Someone say, I provoke the glory. Do something in faith. One day we had a prophet that came to our church long back. He came to our church when we were starting. And then he said, I see you, Prophet William, traveling to nations. You're going to be a prophet to nations, not just to beloved sons' ministries. Then we are Christ Love Ministries. So he says, not just to Christ Love Ministries. And then you know what? I said, I'm going to go lose her. How do you say it? Kukuluza, am I right? I said, I'm going to Kukuluza in Kazumulu. You know what I did? After that, I stood up. Next day, I went straight to apply for the passport. In faith. And then God made it happen. And I said, I'm going to put my passport in place. Because God said, I'm going to travel nations. Some Christians, you prophesy them something special and then they don't, give, they don't even take a step of faith. You prophesy, say, God is saying you're going to own a house in such and such a place. And then the next thing, they pass that place and say, oh, I get to this place. No, start going to view houses in that place. You prophesy to someone and say, God is going to give you a house. I see a house in such a place with a green roof and stuff like that. And the next thing, you know what? They go and check how much they have at the bank. Did God just spoke about the bank? He spoke about the house, brother, not the bank. He didn't speak about your bank manager. He didn't speak about your bank balance. He spoke about giving you a house. Can I tell you something? My, my brother, my brother, my brother that is pastoring a church in, in Zimbabwe, that is pastoring a, a branch in Zimbabwe, this is what my brother did. Someone prophesied to him on the street, and then he said, I see you owning a house. It's, it, you have your name on the house. And he said, oh, no. I, I received the word. I received. Thank you. Can I tell you something? Then he got into church. He realized, hey, that is the word from God. Let me sow a seed for it. And that was Sunday. Sunday, I'm sitting at home. I just arrived from the United States. I'm talking to my wife. And I'm saying, hey, you know what God just said to me? He said that we should... Give that other house to my brother. My wife, you know what she did? She's walking in the house, I'm talking this, and she turned and said, yes, that's what God said. And then you know what? I said, I'm phoning him right now. We are passing the house to him. We are blessing him with that other that house. Then I phone him. It's Sunday morning. He's ready to, he's, he's preparing for the service. Here, and he's declaring that he's going to preach about houses. So I phoned him. I said, what are you going to preach about? He says, I'm preaching about property and stuff like this. I said, oh, brother, you just touched the glory. I said, God told me to give you a house. You have been serving God very well. And I want to honor you with the house. I can't wait to come there to give you all the purpose of the house. Can I tell you something? There is something that can provoke the glory. Someone say, provoke the glory. Kukulusi in Kasimulu. Kukulusi in Kasimulu. Can I tell you, in Kasimulu, you have Kukulusi. It's just sitting there, like that dog, and it's waiting for someone just to take Kukulusi. The minute you could say, oh, I'm coming to you, I'm coming to you. Then the people see you prosperous. Then the people see you blessed. And some people will begin to even have jealous on you. Why? How can, listen, how can you have a jealous on a man you don't know the story of? You don't know what they did. You don't know what they did when they saw the offering basket. You don't know what they did when they saw their pastor. You don't know what they did when they saw their pastor's account. Some are saying, so Kukulusi, glory. <laughs> That's why the Bible, Jesus said, if you believe, you will see the glory. Why? Because it's in faith that you will see the glory. 
That means the other statement is also true. The opposite is true. If you don't believe, you will not see it. <laughs> Look at this. He says, if you believe, you will see the glory. Why? Because there is something about faith and the glory. They are so connected. The actions of faith releases the glory. The actions of faith, they release the glory. Someone say faith. faith. Releases the glory. Someone say faith. faith. Releases the glory. Faith. Can I tell you something? God wants to pour his glory. He wants to pour his glory on everyone here. Can I tell you something? The problem is that people tend to disqualify themselves. They say like, oh, I don't qualify. I stay in such and such a place. I was born by ma, such and such a ma, and blah, 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 blah. Oh, stop your story. Start the story of God. Start a new story. If I tell you my story where I was born and everything, you will think, oh. <laughs> you will, some of you start crying. Why? Because it's not about where I'm coming from. It's about the glory that was set before me. And I had to run the race. I had to, can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? There's something about faith. People despise faith. They don't know how faith works. Can I tell you something? Faith is so wonderful. The spirit realm will never do anything on earth. The spirit realm. God will never do anything on earth until he sees faith. How many here pray in tongues? How many here pray in tongues? Right. Put your hands down. The people that pray in tongues, they can witness this. You pray in tongues, who's praying? The Holy Spirit. But who opens the mouth? Isn't that? Until you open your mouth, the Holy Spirit will never do anything in your life. Until you do something, nothing will happen. Until Christian is in the decision, I'm going to do it. The heaven is waiting for us to do something. Glory of God is waiting for us to arise. Oh God, oh pastor, I'm waiting to see this first and this first. Then I will, I will do something. Hey, wait a minute, sister. You don't know. Do it without seeing anything. Can I, can I tell you something? Some of you ladies that are not yet married, you know what you need to do? You need to go to that bridal shop. Try that dress. L look yourself on the mirror. Take a selfie. <laughs> and the care that is coming. Some of you men that are not married, you know what you need to do? You need to start going to view that house and say, I'm going to put you here. I'm going to put you here. Ah, oh, you didn't hear me, man. <laughs> oh, do something in faith. Why? There is power in, in living by faith. If you take a Christian, if you take a, a, a fish, from water. If you take it out of water, it just dies. It goes and then it dies. It gets confused. Why? Because it lives by water. If you take a human being from oxygen, the next thing dies. Why? Because a human being lives by oxygen. A righteous man lives by faith. If you take a child of God from faith, you will see confusion. That's why some Christians walk like God are confused. They are not having faith. They are not living by faith. Can I tell you something? Faith provokes the glory. You live by faith. If you live by something, that means there's 24 7 living by it. You don't substitute faith for anything in the church. Faith should be everything. You plan things by faith. 
You step into anything. You step into you 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 do, do things in the church by faith. Someone say do things by faith. You buy a car by faith. Ah, you people didn't hear me. Before I had a car, can I tell you? Let me tell you my story. I went to the old dealership. When I go to that old dealership, the old dealership, then I go to there and then I told them I need this A4, old A4. And then the guy was like, "All right, praise God." Um, um, this one, do you want it? Uh, there are specifications you want. I said, um, and I told him the specifications I wanted on all the A4. And he's like, all right, praise God. And then the guy said to me, um, how do you want to pay it? I said, I want to pay it cash. And I did not even have a cent in my pocket. <laughs> Buying cars by faith. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I said, I want to pay cash. Cash, <laughs> cash, say, and then I said, hey, yes, and I was a thin guy, and I was, uh, not that I was, I was not, you, you see, I was struggling, personal, I was struggling, I was really struggling, I tell you, I was struggling, then I was, personal, I was struggling, I had nothing, I was walking, I was, <laughs> so I like, and then I said, I, I, I'm going to pay cash, and the guy looked at me and said, I'm going to pay cash, do you know how much is it, I said, yes, I know, I saw the price on the board. When are you planning to pay for it, sir? I said, I'm, I'm going to come back and take it. Even now, I can take it. I said, can you buy it now? I said, I, I, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Then the guy is standing on the other side, and then he sees me talking to the car. You, follow me. <laughs> follow. Follow. Nandela. You know what? The guy, I saw him going, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm talking to the car. I sit there on the locus. I'm talking. And he sees me. He's seeing me doing everything, talking, talking to the gears, everything. I said, I'm going to change you one day. I'm going to enjoy you. Why not? If I went back to your shine. Then the next thing, I left the shop. And I see this guy is looking at me like, like I don't know how you say it. Like, I'm lost of words to, to say about that man. And then the next thing, a week after that, the car did not follow me. So I had to follow it up. So I went back to the shop. And the guy saw me and he was standing with this lady. And then he, he just said, like, we, we hold the lady like, ah, be, like he was saying, be careful of that man. <laughs> he's not here to buy, he's here to talk with the cars. <laughs> Someone say, glory to God. <laughs> say, glory to God. <laughs> say, glory. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I got there and I, I said, I'm looking for, for George. His name was called George. And then he disappeared. I told you, not around. Sorry, I can save you this lady. And this lady looked like so street. And I said, do you want to buy or you want to talk to cars? I said, yes, I want to buy and talk to them. <laughs> Someone said, glory. <laughs> you know what? And the lady says, no, no, no. You don't talk to cars here. They don't even hear you. I said, then you were not going to live in the days of Jesus when I was talking to trees. Ha <laughs> ha. You're not going to live in the days of Ezekiel talking to bones. You know what I did? The lady said, don't go and talk to you. We, should, we, should, we should just talk and talk. And those people today, today, they treasure me. They treasure me. <laughs> when I got married, my wife came to the house. You know that that, that first day when you're in the house, it's like it's like a, you know, in, in the middle we can say it's by scope, you know. <laughs> like a movie you know 
So she comes in the house and she enters my bedroom. The first day, when we, after we got married, so she enters my bedroom and I'm like, hey, oh God, you have this man. <laughs> The house is there, but uh, it's just, how, I want to say it in Zulu. I don't know how I say it, how to say it. It was just a void, like nothing. But inside, I had a picture of a double story. I had a picture of my private jet. I had a picture of my Jaguar. I had a picture of the garden, everything. So my wife is asking me, so you live here or you live inside here? <laughs> you live in this one or you live in this one on the wall? Which one? Which one? I was like, I'm living in both houses. <laughs> you will join me in both houses. <laughs> and then now, she lives in those houses. We have driven a check or we have driven all these things. And you know what? It's like, sure. No, faith works. Can I tell you something? God is waiting for someone who can provoke the glory. He's waiting for someone who can provoke the glory. Listen, listen, listen. Isaiah 54 says something. It says, Sing, comma, barren woman. Now look at this. It says, Sing, oh, barren woman. Why does it say, oh, barren woman? Can I tell you something? Barren woman is someone someone who can't have children but the Bible tells that woman he says sing 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 to God there is power in singing even if you don't see the result because originally the reason for singing even now in church is because of the victory but imagine singing before you see the victory Imagine, you know some people say, oh, man of God, I'm going through things. I can't come to church. I have this businessman. I had to rebuke him over the phone. This guy will give any amount of money to the church. Any amount of money, any amount of money. God bless him with the, with the Lamborghinis and everything. But any time there's something problem in his, in his business, I'm not coming this Thursday. I'm like, eh, eh, why not? Don't be act like you're a boy. You are a man. And you are a man of God. You are crying over the phone that you are not coming to church because there is a problem in your business. You are owing 20 million. Do you think 20 million is, is something compared to the presence of Jesus? Come to church and solve the problems. You don't solve them by sleeping at home. Come and sing a song before the debts are paid. Sing those songs like the debts are paid. Hallelujah. Oh, man of God, I'm just worried. If you're worried, to come and sing. The barren woman is told to sing. She's not told to cry. She's not told to beg, but she's told to sing. Someone say, I'm going to sing unto my God. Now, look at this. Look at this. This guy, I had to rebuke him for that so that he can start. He can put singing before the miracle, not after the miracle. Now the Bible says, sing, oh, burning woman, you who did not, who, who did not have children, sing. Break forth into singing. Cry aloud. Verse 2, I love verse 2. Verse 2, put verse 2. Enlarge the place of your tent. Someone say enlarge the place of your tent. It says enlarge the, the place of your tent. Now look at this. The reason why he says enlarge the place of your tent, you know why? The woman is she's barren. She does not have children. But the Bible says start putting bedrooms, extend your house. She doesn't have children. The Bible says enlarge your place. Start putting bedrooms. You don't have children, start extending your house. Barren woman, you don't have children. Start putting bedrooms in your house and say, this is for my boy. This is for my girl. This is for another boy. This is for another girl. Are you hearing me, somebody? 
Can I tell you something? Start doing something in faith. People want to see something for them to start putting things in order. Start putting things in order before you see those things. Break forth. Enlarge your territory. Extend your house. Put more bedrooms for your children before you have children but at home. Can I tell you something? Even right now, God is speaking to someone. Enlarge your place before you see him. Shika Sutarama Kadesha Kuranto Kedusa Kadanto. Produce something to provoke the glory of God. Someone say, I'm going to do something to provoke the glory of God. Say, I'm going to do something to provoke the glory of God. Say, I'm going to do something to provoke the glory of God. Say, I'm going to do something to provoke the glory. The glory, can I tell you, the glory will not come to you until you provoke it. Father, right now, we thank you for the spirit to provoke your glory in the house. We thank you that everyone in this place will step into the ground of provoking the glory. Everyone in this place will attract the glory of God. Everyone in this place will put their hands on the glory. Someone say, I provoke the glory. I want us to read this last scripture. Exodus 14, verses 15. Thank you, Lord. Shema Naraba Santa. Usa Naramonda Rafa. Suma Naraba Sanario. Suna Naradino Sinam. Now look at this. Exodus 14, verses 15. God is saying, why are these people crying? Tell them to move forward. In front of you there is a Red Sea, but for the Red Sea to separate is waiting for you to move forward. Hallelujah. Exodus 14, verses 15. Did I say 15? Exodus 14 verses 15. Thank you, Lord. Someone say, I'm provoking the glory. I am provoking the glory of the Lord. Father, right now, let the glory be provoked in this place. Let it be provoked. Let it be provoked. Church, I'm telling you, I'm, pre I'm not preaching a story. I'm preaching the truth here. Let the glory be provoked. Provoke the glory of God. Provoke the glory in your life. Provoke the glory. Provoke the glory. Provoke the glory of God. Hey, provoke the glory of God in your life. Provoke the glory. Provoke the glory. Provoke the glory. Provoke it. Provoke it. Provoke it. The glory want to come to you. It's waiting for you to move forward. It's waiting for you to move forward. The glory is waiting for you to move forward. Someone say, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. I'm moving. The glory is waiting. The glory is waiting for you to move forward. The Red Sea cannot separate until you, until you lift your rod, until you move forward, move forward for the glory. You cannot live like this. You need to change your life. You need to step in. You need to step in. You need to move on. You need to move forward. You need to move forward and to change things. Some of you, you don't know by what you're doing right now, you're changing the whole course of your life, of your business, of your ministry. You're changing the whole course of your life. You're changing your marriage just by doing this. Provoking the glory of God. You are provoking the glory of God. Someone say, I'm provoking the glory. Provoke the glory, provoke the glory. Move forward, provoke the glory. Can I tell you something? We have this lady in our church. She stays in Soweto. And the first time when she came, I said, God, you will change this girl. You will change her life. 
And then my wife, she's, she's really like, uh, if she start talking to you and, uh, and speak to you, she speak the kingdom things. So my wife told her, said, hey, do you know how to tithe? The lady says, no, I don't know, ma'am. And said, I, wanna, I want you to start tithing and see what God will do. The lady started tithing from her salary. It was 10000 And just uh, this week, this week, God started, God started giving a promotion from, from, from just a small amount of money. She went on. She went on. Now he had tithe from, from just a small amount of money. Now he had tithe every month. It's like 8,000, 10,000. And she's working. <laughs> can I, can, may someone provoke the glory. And this is what I said. I said everything was waiting for you to step in. And people don't understand the power of tithing and all these things. That is just for your benefit to provoke the windows of heaven. Ah. To provoke something in heavenly places. Someone say, I provoke the glory. Someone say, I provoke the glory of God. I provoke the glory of God. Now look at this. The Bible says, hey, tell the people to move forward. Because the Red Sea will not separate for them until they move forward. Someone say, I move forward. I provoke the glory. So I provoke the glory. So I provoke the glory. So I provoke the glory. I tell you, we need to live a life of provoking the glory of God. The spiritual realm will never move until the natural realm moves. Until you and me moves. Provoking the glory of God. Father, we provoke your glory. We provoke your glory. Shema Narabasi. Why are you crying? Move forward. That's what the Bible says. Why are you crying? Tell the people to go forward. In front of you, there is a red sea, and you don't have to place to go. In front of you, there is nothing. And God says, Move forward. I want to change your situation. There is nothing but move forward. There is nothing but move. Take a step of faith. Do something in faith. Move forward. Tell your neighbor, shake your neighbor, shake your neighbor's shoulder. Say, hey, when I move forward. Say, move forward. What are you waiting for? Some of you have been waiting for God and God is waiting for you. You have been waiting for God and God is saying, I am waiting for you. Let me give you this last testimony. Ha! Sha! Karaba! Hey! Hey! Can I tell you something? This, this guy he came to church because we started the church in township. And they came this guy. He was living in just a three room house. So he came and he's like, oh man of God, I'm struggling everything. And this and this and this and this. I said, listen, here we live by faith. Everything we do is by faith. This, we have come to the kingdom of God. And this kingdom operates by faith. I love what these men, when they came to pick me from the, when they came to pick us from the hotel, all of, our, all of them they were greeting us like this, shalom, shalom, I'm like, yo, there's a kingdom culture here. And I said to this man, I said, I remember your face from last time, how are you? And then he said, apostle taught me to say, I am blessed, I'm multiplying. I said, hey, there is a kingdom culture in this place. And then, listen, listen. This man comes, and then he says, I'm struggling, and say, and I said, tell, I told him, I said, listen, here in this kingdom, there's no poverty. But you can have poverty if you want. If you want to have it, you can have it, but, but it's not from God. So choose to choose prosperity. And I said, do you know what I want to do? I want you to do, I told him, in this kingdom, we don't try to get and get. We sow and sow and sow. This guy, 
He said, I'm going to start with, this, with what I have. I said, it actually starts with what you have. What you have in your hand, lift it. Can I tell you something? That guy, to today, he has found, he started with a small amount of money, but now he has financed him on most of my meetings. God has blessed him. God he has thoroughly blessed him. In December, when we went to Zimbabwe, he said, don't stay in your house. Come and bless my new home. The house had five bedrooms. God blessed him. And at this time, you were driving here, his car, when, when we went home, when we went to Zimbabwe, he said, I've got a new car. I want prophetess to be one driving it. He started operating in the kingdom, provoking the glory of God. With the simple principles of the kingdom, these simple principles, I call them principles of faith. Small things, tithing, sowing, loving, hearing the word, attending meetings. Small things that people despise and those things, they change the whole course of someone's life. Lord Jesus, help the church. Jesus says, when I come on earth, will I found faith or I found you doing your own thing? faith. Now it's time for church to operate by faith. Lift your hands to Jesus and give him glory.